right, well, we're, we're down at the Desert Duck Pond here. We're uh, Friday, May the 27th. Uh, just getting on to about late, late afternoon. Oh. I'll just let the dogs entertain us for a bit. I don't think you guys even see there. Ah, it's kind of hiding in behind Moo there. Yeah, yeah, we can see him a little bit. Hello. Well, hey, I actually had somebody, uh, somebody agree, um, with the um, real Canadian democracy question. They actually, they actually um, answered it really well. Uh, it was my, um, my genius friend, uh, art friend, um, Edwin Wiesting. Uh, Ed Zed, he's, he's on, I think it's where his, um, where his uh, art collection is. Uh, although he's not too good at the internet thing yet. I think he's mostly dependent on help. Uh, you got that any? Any brilliant young computer suave girls in um <coughs> in um East Hastings area of, of Vancouver, BC? Yes. Ed Edwin needs some lessons. Yes, he's even older than me. I don't think everyone's good in here lap. <laughs> hey, Mo. Okay, just a sec. I'm just going to show these um, plant samples. We're going to take you over to those um, alders. Yeah, that's what I've been calling them. Um, that the beaver chopped down. They, uh, they're in a very advanced state of um, sucking out the dry limbs until they can't grow no more. They're in a very advanced state state of seeding. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> here's right near the rock, uh, the rock thrones. I mean thrones by like seats, you know, that's what they used to call a comfortable rock. Just like we call our porcelain thrones thrones today. <sighs> No pun on, on that fucking nonsense fucking monarchy subjugation routine. Easy, <laughs> <Gah. Gah. laughs> Got no bone, Mo? Ah, bear brought a bone with him. <laughs> it's just great when he does that. It makes him so happy to forage and provide for his family with his skis skills, which I can fully understand. Just make sure the camera didn't get knocked. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll put a link to uh, Edwin's art thing here when I when I get it myself. I've seen some of his art. He's actually just starting to do a show for the first time in his life. <clears throat> um. It seems Edwin Freeston has been, Ed Zed, has been very busy. Um, I actually asked him when he called me up yesterday uh, what his count was to now. Um, what did he say? Um, 78,000 pieces of art? <laughs> he's, he's having a, a show right away here. Um, oh, jeez, now what's it called? Again, I'll put the link um, in in a big art show at the uh, Vancouver Art Gallery there in just off uh, the Hastings Hastings area there downtown Vancouver. Uh, cheap show, I think it's called. Big, uh, big, big, big show sponsored by one of the I don't know one of the soda pop companies or something. Um, and it's like a thousand artists and they each get to put three pieces in or two, 200 artists yeah that, that were selected from 10 
many, many en entrants. Uh, maybe he said a thousand or ten thousand entrants. Two, two thousand entrants. Yeah, two thousand entrants, and they they chose two hundred. So you're gonna have. Um, Two hundred times three pieces of art, you're gonna have six hundred pieces of art being displayed from um, it's from all over. Some of the artists are coming with their pieces too, so you can meet them. Yeah, there we go. I've been trying to get together with Ed so I can show him a little bit I know about how to um, how to enlighten people with his art on. On our YouTube, of course, right? Where, where, where we all know each other. I, I've I've shared uh, some some uh, some examples of, of artists that are doing art shows on YouTube. I'm sure a few of you have come across them and noticed, and that's exactly what the poor starving artists need. And then that's that's just like. An in-your-face example of creativity um, that we kind of put on an altar and create scarcity of, but in fact, being able to market it like that for nothing—just the effort and ability to, to YouTube uh, or get a friend that does—you can market your art all across the globe instantly, <laughs> and in all kinds of ways. As we know, like we annotate our videos and we add things in, and you know, even just with what you can do on YouTube. So now all of a sudden, everyone can do that that wants to. <laughs> Whereas any kind of arts, you know, the starving artists that could make whatever, you know, and now whether they're musicians or, or, or materially creative arts, you know, sculptor, painting, all kinds of whatever machinations they can get their hands on. I mean, that's, that's how I used to do my art. Uh, yeah. So, well, I guess that's the main topic here today, then. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm plugging my, my buddy Edwin and all those other artists. If he thought a contest was good enough that he actually fucking ever... Trust me, he's worse than me this way. That he actually ever um, um, collaborated with a contest of any kind. It must have impressed a mighty big. More than just the timing was just there in his, in his years. Things aren't looking very good at Fukushima. I hope you all been uh, getting the, the stuff I've been forwarding to you, other people's work. Um, you know, surely if we if we had a bunch of more informed minds with uh, access to all kinds of information, the imaginary would just flow forth. Critical um, creativity, we'll call it. And the more you know, the more um, practical and productive and worth attempting your efforts are. It's just, it's just amazing what, what can be done networking. Um, you know, when there's information and the, the best, quickest information to get through at, at a certain level is, of course, the visual kind or the visual uh, audio kind as we do now. directional hearing 2D we'll call it which is really 3D when you incorporate things like links and stuff because it actually adds depth to it and you can you know, quickly pull up on screen a whole another piece of information within the information just just like our brains actually do anyhow when you present information in a natural form like that you don't end up wasting a whole lot of inconsistencies uh, a lot of effort trying to s store and access and recall catalog and index from one format to another our brains work the same way they
So this going with our passions and our, our creativity, which we've always tried, and, you know, hasn't been so friendly for that kind of thing in most circumstances in our lives. And here's where it actually it actually can be an evolution, at least a societal evolution. And it takes that kind of thing before you can surely start working on it collectively independent. But uh, clearly you can't do it when you're acting like a bunch of dumb competitive beasts. Which doesn't get any better when you cluster. This cluster against that cluster. Especially if, you know... If you make a lot of your decisions like children are an important belief. Decision making that just sets you up to be manipulatable. It's not, oh, it's fine in the nursery school. Uh, uh, even the walls are padded so you can't hurt yourself. <laughs> oh, what the plugs you? Covered up so you can't electrocute you, shock yourself or whatever, but in dire circumstances like we got. One hand, we got a bunch of people trying to exploit it. Which really is goes against every uh, profiteering in, in more all countries. No. Laws in place against profiteering, and that has to extend all forms of profiteering and awful, awful from violent conflict, war, like what we're doing in Libya and all over the Middle East. This uh, end of empire nonsense. Just, just exactly the same death blow of all the empires who look back in history and the sketchy fucking history, they would have a little bit you can get. You see? That's exactly what you see, right? We all know that. So, so let's just wait the doubt from the mind and quit fucking around. We know exactly where we are at. And now the Fukushima fallen star thing. So let's go there, right? Eh? Now it's like, uh, It's very likely this did happen before. I think at least in my favorites, there's actually some a couple of videos on that. They've gone to sites that were on, uh, in India that were, you know, they're covered in some of the ancient scripts too. So. more importantly than that, that's where we're at right now. And uh, this, I'm going to definitely put Arnie Gunderson's, uh, he was uh, the uh, very diversified um, uh, nuclear uh, thought, uh, well he's more than a nuclear engineer, he's, uh, I don't know what all titles he's got, but he's worked in the trade forever and then he's at the later ends of his careers here. I'm putting his link up, right? Putting his link up right right there, Arnie. Uh, he's uh, acting, had been acting like a consultant for quite a few years. And, uh, this this one here is a, I sent you all out the video, but I'm gonna link it here again. For those who are coming after that, don't get my Boltons, um, because they're not subscribed and, or, or check friends or whatever, uh, to where that feature is works. Um, yeah, well, and here he is. We got a five minute uh, allotment of time in a very biased setting with the National uh, nu nu Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, and uh, the International Forum and that's, uh, that's uh, supposedly in Fukushima, the uh, Dachi reactor plant right now. Uh, or off-site going over the, uh, all the, uh, <coughs> the evidence particulars, whatever TEPCO shares with them. Um, and so we're there now. Uh, yeah, well, you know, we got, but even, even TEPCO's come clean about it now. Yeah, well, we got, we got holes in the containment vessel, and that means exactly that. You've had meltdown activity and they melted through. They melted through the uh, stainless steel reactor and of 
gone out and water leaks out there and that's how they first knew and, and now oh, all this groundwater coming up in the water table uh, and that means that the pressurized water is going out the holes that melted through the, the reactor and the containment building. Uh, Arnie mainly focuses on he only had five minutes and it was sabotaged. And it's not the whole meeting was like, uh, there were, there were other, other uh, it's like a major thing, right? Watch the video. Yeah, so, you know, we can't get a straight goods. Uh, yeah, it is, it is, uh, it is a fact that um, the little bit of buffer is, it does in fact deteriorate. Uh, not that the rule of thumb doesn't really work because it's all, it's, you know, these are messes scattered all over the debris pile, <laughs> in the bottom of the debris pile. And basically what it is, is whatever it's doing now, uh, as things change and the reaction can pick up, whether it's moved or just the ambient around it that, that dictates how fast the energies can transfer between atoms and, and, and trigger up criticality. All that's uh, still changing and way not not nearly feasible. And if one of them goes up, uh, which is a, a, a pile that makes it to pass a certain point to where they can't contain it and keep it from going going to an explosion, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, it'll wipe out all the rest too. Uh, not necessarily wipe them out into a, a fission or, or fusion state. Uh, but certainly vaporize them and send, you know, not pounds, but thousands of tons to the ship, along with, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of concrete and stainless steel and ground and dirt and water and everything else, super high into the atmosphere and you know, of that solution. Uh, you know, vaporized. A a atomized, pardon me. Ion ionized. Just And, um, wow, now we got it, we got extinction. Potential. And even without space weather that we're still desperately scrambling to try and understand, uh, you know, as, as our sun's atmosphere, our heliosphere, goes through the local interstellar cloud, which I keep telling you guys about, and now NASA's coming right forth, I mean, as little as they know, uh, which makes them very reluctant to speak about such serious business. Yeah. That's, uh, that's where all the extra energy is coming in and hitting all the planets and warming up, making them expand like a like a a boiling egg. Runs out of air pocket and then it splits its shell. That's that's what happens to it when these kind of things happen. Seems dead sure that this did happen. Thirteen thousand years ago was the main the main driving force behind the Clovis event. the Clovis extinction event, and that's, as I told you, that's a lair, that proves it was there, anywhere that wasn't glaciated at the time, uh, it doesn't mean that's exactly how it's going to pan out this time, because it's a different arm, when supernovas blow up just like uh, fusion or fission bombs that they've blown up, and they've driven through it as soon as they could, like minutes after, uh, with with drones and sometimes piloted in the early stages and they measured and it's, oh wow, when, when this happens it doesn't spread things out evenly, which explains exactly what they're seeing now with supernovas and crab nebulas and, and all that shit, it explains why it doesn't, you know, it gets, things don't blow off evenly, they blow off in blobs. You might have something over here that's mainly iron, something over here that's, you know, carbon and silicone. Over here is just hydrogen. You know, maybe here is hydrogen and oxygen. Maybe 
here is, is well, everything under the star. <laughs> Supernovas make more than what's in the star, though. They can uh, compress things a lot heavier. Fusion, fusing, fusing atoms together, making heavier elements. They can make it all. This, uh, yeah, this can be like a couple thousand year process. Thousands of years or hundreds of years going through this cloud and there's different blotches all over. We don't know what they are or how energetic or how dense or any of that stuff that nor, nor do we really know, you know, <clears throat> how it will interact with us here on Earth and further out at our heliosphere. We do know this is, this is space weather. We should have known it because it's written in all your books. You now all, all the religions you look at, they, they, you can see you boil it down and that's that's what the earliest stuff it's like here. Here's shit to carry forward and I could just see it, you know. Exactly how it would go down. Anyone who would survive a catastrophe like that? You're a Blantian idea? Well, they would try and certainly try and remember it, pass it down, and even you know, if they couldn't explain it because all the education was lost and all the nutrition was lost, and, you know, people were basically relegated to being beasts for a while till they got it together again. Um, you know, we can, we can be doing that to ourselves right, right, right fucking now their own um, negligent technologies like what's going down at Fukushima and happened at, at Chernobyl and others too. Those were the worst ones. And as, as I said before, you know, what uh, all this extra energy and matter that that comes out of this this process of going back through the our supernova creator's dust, stardust. It's creator's milk, to put it in biblical terms. Uh, the energy exchanges that happen and shit, you have no way of telling to it what... I mean, we barely even know about it, we're just starting to get detectors and shit. And we know that that's exactly how you change materials, so what does that do when you have, you know, a pile of fusionable material that's already so unstable with the ambient energies around it and acting that it can blow up. You know, there's lots of these factors. It's just been something incredible. And a lot of us, without even understanding the little bit I do, just kind of, hey, 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 something doesn't add up here. But making decisions on a Science rationale, especially critical decisions like like that, while well, knowing so little, we, we just got to um, put our denial shock aside and fucking get with it right fucking now, right right fucking now. We have to. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, I don't, want, <laughs> I don't know new nuclear science. It doesn't matter. You pass it around. You talk to people. You, you make sure that the scientists do have what they need. And they understand and support materially. Um, you know, we're, we're fighting now to keep the, the poorly run services that are now available. Uh, you know, we're talking NASA, all the astronomers, all that shit. That, that's what it takes to support. <clears throat> a lot of the bullshit that's been done, you know, was done by fools. And that's got to be dealt with, too, if we survive. So, with that, let's go have a little ice lesson. Stress survival strategies. So this, this does kind of work into what I've been trying to say. You know, we'll, we'll just do it at that level.
Let me shoot up. No, you guys stay there, please. Move that. There. Okay, don't give me a hard time, guys. I'm taking the the camera over to those beaver down at poppers. I don't know what happened there. I think it's still working. Yeah, so, here's the, I think they've been like 10 days now. But these have been beavered down. We've had a few hot days, but it, it was unusually humid because we've been getting lots of rain. So the leaves haven't really dried out. They're just working on sap. Uh, keep in mind, you know, we're early spring here, so don't mind me. Just concentrate on the flowers. So they managed to go through their seed cycle. Yeah, this was definitely, well, again, I don't know, is it poplar or is it alder? <sighs> I think it is poplar, but, so it's definitely going through its seed cycle. Opening up all these little balls into cotton. And I don't know, are these fertilized before they go, or are they, you never know, eh? So, and it's death blow, getting back to our reality, and, and, and we're going to try and illustrate a story here, and it's death blow, and keep in mind now, we, uh, we established, I did not pull that tree down when I fell out of the sky and grabbed on it. The, the beavers had already doomed it, right? If, if we go back a couple episodes, when a tree falls, or something like that, I think it was called, and it had the word beaver in the title. Let's go back half a dozen or so. Let's finish examining these leaves. See, they're all, they've all been affected with this. Radiation rot. Early stages or something. <sighs> So I wonder if the beavers actually eat these seeds and leaves and stuff for food. Or if they just stick to swamp roots. Which I think is part of why they build their little lakes, eh? Yeah, it's starting to rain. Well, there's been lots of rain, so I think I'm not going to freak out worry about it. Should be clean. We never know, so you know, I am taking a chance. It's really too bad we didn't have fallout reports and we'd know this stuff just like a tornado coming or a snowstorm or a thunderstorm and we would seek coverage and minimize our exposure. You heard that, eh, government? Right? I'm saying it again. And all these people that are hearing it, hopefully they're going to be fucking emailing this to. Their local civil servants, their their local emergency service providers, whether it's you know your national guard or your your or your fire department, your police or local police station or whatever, whatever you got, your local hospital or. I don't know. Any, anyone that deals with emergencies that should be your local weather bureau, your local aviation bureau, uh, that should be monitoring this stuff. And hit them up with freedom 
of information demands and or requests, whatever you call them, wherever you are, and uh, get their fucking readings. Look at, <clears throat> get a hold of policy books or talk to your friends that actually work in them, so they're not putting their neck on the line, and get them to tell you what to look for and in, in the, the, the acts and the policies, and then you'll be empowered and you write that down or whatever, and you email that off or you deliver it in hand if you have to or whatever. Or whoever's supposed to be measuring this shit, the local forestry office, or whatever, and you say, Here you go, I want this fucking information. And you help me fill out this freeway information request form. I want these readings. If you're not going to release them, I want them so I can protect myself. I have a right to survive. I have a duty to do that. You were paid to do that. You agreed to by contract. You're in breach of contract. And you're also. In, stand, in, in criminal standing, if somebody gets injured from your negligence and it's your, it's definitely your duty to act to prevent, act in, in, in peace and safety and prevent them from getting hurt. Well, we're getting rained on here slightly, so it's just a quick little sprinkle, but you never know. I already got radiation rained once and I'm still pissed about it. Come on, guys. Hey, wait. Yeah, we'll let the dogs finish off. Yeah. Ah, there. Okay, the rain stopped. Just kind of like a, well, I won't say sun shower, but. A rogue storm cloud. <laughs> oh, gee, I just realized we didn't even give you one in the lake today. Pond, back pond. There we go. Oh, and uh, last but not least, yes, we are in a uh, solar wind stream. Go to spaceweather.com is a good place. Or Solar Watcher on YouTube here. And there's a few others. Uh, I put out a warning a couple days ago. I don't know who all got it. As I generally do. I put it on one with uh, nice shots of that big moon we had a, a week ago. Yeah. When I, uh, an hour ago, the readings were uh, KP3, uh, expected to go to 4, and it could uh, go quite a bit more. It, it has the potential to go quite a bit more as we get out of the bulk of it. That we're, we're in the thick now, and, uh, oh, what was that? I looked, I looked at the uh, data graphs. Uh, AMG. I'm gonna put his site right here, actually, so you guys can start looking for yourself some more. I've sent it out lots, but and he does this all out of his pocket. So you know, if you got something you can donate, even just comments will comment when you. That's uh, to do with Solar Watcher, the Australian fuller. I think that's right. That's all his stuff. Yeah. Okay, uh, so anyhow, there's the link. Yeah, and as we go out of the thick of it, uh, what was that, like about, uh, about 1700 or so on uh, May 28th, that's Saturday, uh, UTC time. Uh, we'll be coming out of the thick of it, and there's there's potential there to... have a bit of a uh, field shutter and snap I don't even know what the ground currents are now uh, and uh, we did have uh, some couple of C-class CMEs uh, lift off but uh, yeah well come on guys under the tree 
which is not a, wouldn't be a good thing if, if a tree was uh, <clears throat> dirty, uh, as in, you know, radioactively dirty, hot. Come on, guys! And then when it started dripping off the tree, you could, in theory, give yourself a bunch more. No, come! Okay, yeah, well, gotta close the camera and keep her dry. Bye-bye.